Hello everyone. The other day I encountered a video on YouTube that was talking about implicit differentiation. Now I'm not going to explain the whole point of implicit differentiation here. I just thought it was an interesting uh, set of examples uh, and I thought I would run through uh, the two of these examples first using the implicit differentiation and second by solving for y and then differentiating normally. And that should give some idea why implicit differentiation is actually useful in some circumstances. Uh, how it can make things easier, especially if you don't have to be solving for uh, the y or x in the differentiated equation. So the first example was uh, a basic circle equation. It was x squared plus y squared equals 36. Now, that's a relatively straightforward uh, equation, right? So what we want is we want to find dy dx. Uh, you might see that written as y prime, uh, but personally I prefer this notation. So, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to find dy dx and we'll use the implicit differentiation. Uh, so, uh, first we differentiate x squared. That gives us 2x. And then we have to differentiate y squared. Now, we're differentiating with respect to x. Uh, so, we can't just put 2y and be done with it. Uh, what we, we do is we have 2y and then we have a dy dx in there. And then we have to remember to differentiate both sides. 36 will differentiate to 0. Now what we need to do is solve for dy dx. We just treat dy dx as a variable. So that will give us 2y dy dx equals minus 2x. And then if we divide by 2y, we end up with dy dx equals minus 2 x over 2y, which is just equal to minus x over y. So that gives us our result using plain old ordinary uh, implicit differentiation. Now, we could also have found this by first solving for y and then differentiating normally. Now, uh, I should be clear, I have a cheat sheet. I'm not doing this on the fly. Uh, so, we solve for y, we end up with y squared equals 36 minus x squared, right? And then we need to square root that uh, to get y. So y equals, and I'm going to write the square root as to the one-half power here. Okay, so that gives us y, and now we can differentiate this. Now, this we have to use the chain rule on. So, we're 
we're going to have dy dx equals, so we differentiate the outside, so it's going to be 1 half 36 minus x squared to the minus 1 half. Uh, and then we have to differentiate the inside term, which uh, is 36 minus x squared. The 36 goes away, and that gives us minus 2x. Now, as I said, I'm not going to explain how differentiation works, but this is what you get with the chain rule. Now we do some algebra on that. So the 1 half and the minus 2 cancel. And this actually goes down. Okay, so that means that we end up with minus x over uh, 30 six minus x squared to the one half. Now, the real question is, is this actually equivalent? Uh, it should be equivalent, but how do we show that? Well, if you observe when we were solving for y, we got y squared equals 36 minus x squared. We have a 36 minus x squared here. So we can just substitute that for y squared with y squared. So that gives us minus x over y squared to the one half power. Now that means this is actually equal to minus x over y. So we can show here that these two results are in fact equivalent. Now in this case, uh, depending what you need, uh, it, it may, may be nicer to have it in terms of x like this, or this might be fine. Uh, either one is useful, uh, and you'll note that uh, it's actually less work to do the implicit differentiation uh, in, uh, in this case. Uh, this is actually more complicated than this one is, and we have to do about the same amount of algebra either way. Now. There was another example, and that was y equals sine x minus x squared y plus y. Whoops. Pardon me. This was actually all equal to 10x. Yeah, I got ahead of myself there with the uh, y equals. Uh, I do too much stuff where y equals, so you get kind of stuck in a rut there. Now we need to find dy dx. So now. I uh, have to get my cheat sheet out here. This one is, in fact, quite a lot more complicated. Uh, first, we'll do impl the implicit differentiation. So when we do that, sine x, uh, the derivative of that is cosine x. So we have cosine x. And subtracting, now we have to use the product rule on that. That gives us x squared dy dx plus 2xy. 
and then we differentiate y, which is just going to be dy dx, and that's going to be equal to 10. Now, we have to do some algebra to get dy dx uh, isolated here. And you'll note that just like before, we're going to treat dy dx as a unit, as a variable. So, uh, first of all, we'll distribute the subtraction, which gives us cosine x minus x squared dy dx minus 2xy plus dy dx equals 10. Now, we'll get everything that's not dy dx over onto the right-hand side. So that's going to give us minus x squared dy dx plus dy dx equals 10 minus cosine x plus 2 x, y. Now, we can factor this out, so that gives us dy dx times, and I'm going to flip the order here because I don't like leading with a minus sign, 1 minus x squared, or minus x squared plus 1, and that's going to be equal to 10 minus cosine x plus 2xy. Okay. And now we do the final. We uh, shift our uh, 1 minus x squared over. So that gives us dy dx equals 10 minus cosine x plus 2xy over 1 minus x squared, and that is our answer. So, uh, that gives us a little bit of complication going on there. But, we can also solve for y first. And doing that, uh, it's just like we were solving for dy dx here, we need to get all the y's on one side. So, this is going to give us and I'm going to switch the order of x squared y and y in this case again. So that gives us y minus x squared y equals 10x minus sine x. Then we factor y out. So that's y times 1 minus x squared equals 10x minus sine x. And again, we divide that out. So we get y equals 10x minus sine x over 1 minus x squared. Now we can differentiate that normal. Uh, in this case, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So that's going to give us dy dx equals 1 minus x squared here times 10 minus cosine x subtract 10x minus sine x times minus 2x over 1 minus x squared times 1 minus x squared. Now I could write that as, as squared, but uh, you'll see that that's going to be useful to have it split out in the next bit. Now, this is our answer, but it doesn't look anything like this answer. So the question is, how do we demonstrate, again, that this one is, in fact, equivalent? Well, again, if you look up top, you can see that we have 10x minus 
sine x is equal to y times 1 minus x squared. So we can substitute that in. So that means that we have 1 minus x squared times 10 minus cosine x minus y times 1 minus x squared times minus 2x over 1 minus x squared times 1 minus x squared. Now, the astute among you will notice that now we have a common factor on the top, which happens to match a factor on the bottom. So let's pull that out. Got a lot of paper looks to uh, roll up and got it off a roll, anyway. Um, right, so that gives us, well, I'm not gonna write it out with the factor in front and, the, and this separated out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just remove it, because you can see one minus x squared, one minus x squared, that can be factored out, that gives us this minus Actually, I will pull that out. So that gives us 1 minus x squared times, now we got 10 minus cosine x. And this minus times this will actually turn into a plus, because this is gone now, remember, it's outside. So now we have y times minus 2x. So that's going to be plus 2xy, and that's going to be over 1 minus x squared times 1 minus x squared. Now we, this cancels out, so now we get our final result 10 minus cosine x plus 2xy over 1 minus x squared. So we have now shown that these two here are in fact equivalent. And if you take a look up here, this was actually quite a bit less work to get a result uh, because we, we only had to use a simple product rule. Here we had to use the quotient rule for differentiation, so that's more complicated. Um, now, if, if, you, if you need a situation where you're going to be solving, you, you're going to want the uh, y prime result, the dy dx result from the equation, then, uh, you know, in terms of x, then you're going to uh, probably want to take this path when you can, but not necessarily, because even with this form here, uh, you can still use the original equation to get y, and then use this to get the value for dy dx. So it depends on what you're going to use this for. Uh, but the whole point of this exercise was to show that uh, you end up with equivalent result uh, regardless which way you go. And you can, obviously, get from this to this, uh, the same way we got from this back to this. You would just substitute the original, uh, you'd solve for y, and then you'd substitute that in here and do some algebra, and it should simplify out to, to this, or something that looks like this. Um, you could distribute this out, uh, these, these things out, and uh, end up with uh, massive polynomial things with a sine function in there, but there's really no need to do that. Now, the whole point of this, uh, well, there really isn't much of a point. I just thought it was uh, an interesting uh, thing about, the, uh, about this, uh, and it shows that there's more than one way to attack a problem, and that's something that a lot of people lose track of in their 
uh, math studies and, and other things. Uh, particularly when they get into math, advanced math particularly, uh, they get stuck on, because they don't understand what they're doing, most people, and this is not a commentary on the people themselves. Uh, it's a commentary on the topic matter uh, as much as anything and the way it's taught. But uh, here we've got two different paths that we could take with these equations and we got, get exactly equivalent results. So uh, it, uh, it's something that uh, you should be aware of when you're doing uh, mathematics or computer programming or anything that uh, the your first instinct on how to do it uh, while it may be perfectly valid may not in fact be the simplest way and it may not even be the best way now for these examples it's not clear which method is actually the best method because they're given, these equations are given completely out of context. You don't know what they're for. So you don't know why you would be differentiating them in the first place. Uh, and I can't think of any situation where uh, this one would come up, but that doesn't mean it doesn't. So uh, the thing, so if you're doing something and you come up with uh, a result and it doesn't seem to make sense uh, for the context you're using it in, uh, go ahead and look for another way. See, uh, if I would have seen either one of these uh, equations uh, before I, uh, recently before I watched that video on implicit differentiation, uh, I probably would have solved for y and then did all did the, these these methods, uh, and I would have done that because most cases when I've been using a derivative, I've been trying to calculate acceleration from velocity or velocity from position, and in that case, this form with the y still in it is not actually useful as an end result. On the other hand, there's plenty of cases in physics and what have you where you don't need to have have it all solved up nicely uh, so that you can use the dy dx result directly. Uh, and maybe you've got five or six more steps to go through that may in fact eliminate uh, these y's or whatever. Uh, it or it doesn't actually matter for your end result. Uh, in that case, probably the implicit differentiation is uh, easier. Uh, but it's, it's a case-by-case -case call. Now, there are certainly equations where solving for y is going to be impractical or impossible. Uh, and uh, even if it's not impossible, it's going to give you something with some pretty nasty domain restrictions or what have you. Uh, or it's going to confuse the issue or give you something you really can't differentiate easily. Uh, where you end up having to go down a rabbit hole of chains, and chain differentiation and uh, products and quotients and so on. And the next thing you know, you've got a big mass of algebra you have to do just to make sense of what you've just done, where if you would have done it uh, implicitly, uh, you probably would have got to a result sooner. Anyway, uh, I certainly invite people to... Uh, uh, look into this further if you know uh, don't feel bad if you don't understand how I got from this to this uh, there's plenty of tutorials on the internet on uh, on how differentiation works uh, on, and how you how you do actually do it and even how you derive these processes on how to do it uh, at some point in the future I may actually uh, do some videos on just that, uh, but at this point in time, this is what I actually found interesting, was that you could differentiate it two ways and end up with the same result. Now, an interesting thing, uh, standard differentiation is essentially the same process uh, when you really come down to it. Is here your original equation solve for y is y equals this here 
And if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, I get dy dx over here. Uh, and that's what you get when you differentiate y with respect to x, right? Uh, and I don't have any y terms over here, so I don't pick up any dy dx's over here. Uh, so it's basically the same process either way, uh, if you really get down to it. So it doesn't really matter which order you do the algebra in uh, so much. Uh, really, I think, is what it comes down to. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, enough rambling on this topic for now. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, uh, drop me a line uh, on my channel or some other means if you happen to know one. Um, and be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. And if you've watched this far, thank you for watching.